welcome back my dear students so today's lecture we are going to see the analysis and design of a flange section that is a t beam and an l beam so first we need to understand what do you mean by a t beam and or l beam or what do you mean by flange section what is its behavior so here you can see you can see a beam over here rectangular beam and this is a slab similarly here there is a rectangular beam and the slab on both sides so when the, at the time of construction when we construct the slab and the beam together it acts as a single unit and the behavior is different from that of a rectangular beam section so such a beam section where the beam and the slab act together or the section which is having a slab and beam together is called as a flange section and based on the spanning of the slab either in one direction if there is a slab on the two direction there are two kind of flange section that is t beam and l beam so if you see here you can see there is a slab over here and the beam this acts together such a section is called as a flange section here it is a t beam because the beam is spanning on both the direction it resembles the shape of a t so consider a elevated water tank it can be a rectangular or a circular whatever be then taking the section of this this consists of beams and columns so till now what you have studied a single reinforced section or a double reinforced rectangular beam section you have studied was there was only a beam so here also you can see if i'm taking the beam alone this is the beam this column and here it is the beam so this beam stands alone beam stands alone you can see here the column is here the beam is here hey, there is only beam there is no part integral part of a slab over here so there is only beam and column arrangement here similarly similarly if you take a precast slab if you take a precast slab the rectangular beam is placed after that the precast slab is laid over here so which means these two units acts as different or these two units acts differently so you can see here over this beam the precast slab is being simply laid the precast slab is in simply laid so such a section you can see here so i can conclude that a reinforced concrete slab used in floors that is mostly the reinforced concrete slab is used in floors or roofs and decks are mostly cast monolithic from the bottom of the beam to the top of the slab as we have seen here such rectangular beams having slab on top are different from others having either no slab that is here there is no slab bracings of elevated tanks lintels etc or having disconnected slabs as in some precast system or you can see here so such kinds there are different but others will form a monolithic part that is the roof and the beam form a single unit such a section is called as a flange section consider a roofing system like this there are this is the column you can see the column here this is the slab and these are the beams these are the beams so what i do is i will cut a section like this i will cut a section like this this is the same view top view of this i will cut a section like this such that it looks like this see it is like this that is this beam over present over here this yellow color beam is the end beam you can see it like this this intermediate beam you can see like this so this beam this beam and this slab forms a single unit this beam and this slab forms a single unit so i can say if i see here this slab this slab over here this slab over here and this beam forms a single part i can draw it like this and this kind of beam is called as a l beam or flanged beam flanged beam in that particularly l beam similarly here you can see rectangular beam over here rectangular beam over here and this slab is being spanned on both the direction and such a beam or beam is a t beam or flanged beam particularly t beam we can see most of the reinforced concrete structures slabs and beams are cast monolithically that is due to monolithic casting beams and a part of the slab act together such beams having slab on the top of the rectangular rib or web that is the rectangular portion of this we call it as rib or web are designated as the flange beams either t or l type depending on whether the slab is on both sides or on one side of the beam here the slab is assumed to act as the flange of the beam that is i can say for a t beam this is called as the flange and this is called as the web or rib so this depth i'll call it as df that is the depth of the flange 
and this is bw that is width of the web as a df i could write it as flange bw and this i'll denote it as bf i'll tell you what is this bf in detail that is bf is effective width of flange total depth i will be denoting it as capital d and this is as usual ast area of steel under tension so in this case if you see the deflection the flange will be taking the compression most of the cases the flange will be taking the compression for a simply supported beam and and the reinforcement will be taking the tension in some cases of a t beam section the web will also take the compression some part of the web will also take the compression so if you see here cross section of a beam slab arrangement so this beam this particular beam suppose i am say taking this particular beam this beam this beam is taking the load from either side of the slab that is i will take i will consider the midpoint of this slab i will consider the midpoint of this slab and midpoint of this slab so the beam is having an influence from the midpoint of this slab to midpoint of this slab so whatever load is coming over this portion that is getting transferred to this beam and through this beam it is getting transferred to some column or if there is a uh, load bearing wall is there it is getting transferred to that wall so the width up to which this beam is having influence is called as b or actual width of the flange now for design purpose we will assume another width which is less than the actual width of the flange denoted by b is suffix small f bf that is effective width of the flange that is we are taking in order for the analysis purpose and i will discuss that in detail that is so b is the actual width of the flange that is how much influence this beam have this beam is having influence or it is taking load from center line of this whatever load is coming from here to here it is taking and from here to here it is taking so load which is being here present here is taken by this beam and the load which is being present here it is taken by this beam so now we will discuss more on effective width of the flange effective width of the flange so here you are having a beam and this is the actual width of the beam here b is the actual width now here you can see bf so b is the actual width so when i when i plot the compressive stress diagram i am getting it's not a linear variation i am getting i am not getting a linear variation it will be maximum below the rib at the point of the rib the compressive stress will be maximum and when it is moving towards the flange towards the flange it is having lesser and this variation is not linear so when i am considering or when i am doing the analytical part of this this gets very complicated so what the code suggests is that it assumed a stress distribution it assumed a stress distribution such that whatever compressive force is produced by this actual stress distribution diagram the same will be produced by this assumed stress distribution only thing is that this is is uniform that is this assumed stress distribution diagram is uniform so whatever compressive force is generated by this actual stress distribution diagram is obtained from this assumed stress distribution diagram also but we consider this stress distribution as a uniform one and the width will be reduced such that new width is the effective width and this is an hypothetical this is a uh, assumed valor it is used for your calculation purpose this is not the actual one this is used for calculation purpose such that we will get a uniform stress distribution diagram so if i am con if i am uh, concluding this you will see the variation of the compressive stress along the actual width of the flange shows that the compressive stress is more in the flange just above the rib you see here it is more just above the rib than at some point distance away from it the nature of variation is complex and therefore the concept of effective width has been introduced this variation is very much complex in order for the study purpose so that we introduced a new concept that is called as the effective width of the flange the effective width is a convenient hypothetical width of the flange over which the compressive stress is assumed to be uniform to give the same compressive force as it would have been in case of the actual width with the true variation of the compressive stress that is i could i could say that the effective width is a conven convenient hypothetical width this is not the real one this is a hypothetical width of the flange over which the compressive stress is assumed to be uniform you can see here the compressive stress is uniform 
to give the same compressive force suppose this assumed stress is giving a compressive force c as it would had been in case of the actual width with the true variation of the compressive stress this also or this is giving an compressive stress c then this assumed stress distribution will also give a compressive stress c so i hope you are clear with this effective width concept so wherever you are going to for the design you will always use this bf only that is effective width now the code suggests in clause number 23.1.2 is 456-2000 the code gives the effective width of the section you can see here in clause number 23.1.2 that is effective width of the flange in the absence of more accurate determination the effective width of the flange may be taken as the following but in no case greater than the breadth of the web plus half the sum of the clear distance to the adjacent beams on either sides that is i should never this value should never be greater than bw plus 1 by 2 of clear span this must never be greater than b by bw that is width of the web plus half the clear span so for t beams bf is equal to l naught by 6 plus bw plus 6 df for and for l beams bf is equal to l naught by 12 plus bw plus 3 df so here there is another one that is isolated beams isolated beam is suppose this two this beam for t beam and l beam they have denoted such way that suppose i am having a slab system like this there is one beam here another beam going like this it's going like this that is here the beam and the slab are together and this forms an l beam this is another this is a t beam so this is being represented over here and here and for isolated beam means we are casting the beam as l beam as flange beam it will be as flange beam but this is acting alone it will be like this there won't be any continuity for this beam that is it is isolated it is standing alone it is standing alone so for such cases for such cases isolated t beam bf is equal to l naught by l naught by b plus 4 plus bw and for l beam bf is equal to 1.5 l naught by l naught by b plus 4 into bw where bs bf is the effective width of the flange that is what you need to determine l naught l naught is a new term for you that is the distance between the point of zero moments in the beam so i will explain this in detail what do you mean by l naught that is a point between zero moments bw as you know it is the width of the web df is the thickness of the flange and b is the actual width of the flange rest of the things we are clear that is in order to find the effective width the code suggests the equation for BF for different kind of T-beam and L-beam. That is mainly continuous T-beam and isolated beam. So, I hope this is clear for you. So, we will now discuss on how to find this l naught distance. How to find this l naught distance. So, consider a simply supported beam like this. It is being supported over here and here. I am applying a UDL over this beam in this way. Such that my bending moment diagram I will be obtained like this. That is... I could say here the point of zero moments, the point of zero moments over here and here. So whatever is the distance between, this is the distance between the point of zero moments. So that is called as L naught, the distance between the point of zero moments. So for a simply supported beam, L naught is the distance between the supports. And now we consider, now we consider a continuous beam. A continuous beam, you'll get the you're getting the bending moment diagram in this way so that if i'm taking this beam if i'm taking this beam the zero moments is from here to here the zero moment is from here to here that is i'll take this distance as l naught and the code suggests this distance as 0.7 times the effective span that is 0.7 times the effective span is the distance between the point of zero moments and this effective span we'll discuss in detail when we are dealing with the design of slab but for time being you understand effective span is the clear span plus d o center to center distance between the supports whichever is lesser so here we will take it as 0 0.7 times the effective span for a continuous beam based on the or depending on the depth of the neutral axis that is x u and depth of the flange section d f there are different cases of flange section. So, if I draw a flange section like this, this is the depth of the new flange. This is BW. I am providing reinforcement over here. Now, there can be 
two cases that is if i am drawing the stress distribution you will see like this the tension is taken by the steel and the compression is taken by the flange or by the flange and the web together so if i am drawing the stress distribution i will be getting like this that is, this is the stress distribution that is point you can see here here the first case i will denote this by case 1 that is xu is less than depth of the flange x is less than depth of the flange that is whatever the stress is coming is entirely taken by the flange of the section that is x is less than df now the second case what may be the second case the second case is definitely x u is greater than df the tension will be taken by the steel itself here x u is greater than df and there can be two cases that is There can be two cases that is this distance that is this straight portion is 3 by 7 xu this straight portion is 3 by 7 xu so the first case that is 3 xu greater than df xu greater than df i'll take it as case number 2 case 2 and this i'll denote as case a and b case number 2 xu greater than df as well as this is also xu greater than df but here you can see the straight portion that is 3 by 7 xu is also greater than what df that is xu greater than df as well as 3 by 7 xu greater than df and here the straight portion 3 by 7 xu is less than df so if you closely look over here you can see based on the depth of the neutral axis there are two cases that is based on the depth of the neutral axis and depth of the flange there are two cases that is one is xu less than df and xu greater than df and in xu greater than df there is 3 by 7 xu that is the straight portion is greater than df and 3 by 7 xu that is straight portion less than df so i can i can summarize it like this there are two cases case one where xu is less than df which means the neutral axis lies inside the flange the neutral axis lies inside the flange and the second case that is xu greater than df xu is greater than df where the neutral axis lies outside the flange so if i divide this sub case case 2 that is case a where 3 by 7 xu is greater than or equal to you know this by equal to greater than or equal to df that is the rectangular part of this stress block is greater than df and 3 3 by 7 xu less than df that is the rectangular part 3 by 7 xu is less than df that is the rectangular part of the stress block is less than df now we will study this in detail that is the three cases that is when i am loading a beam from the top and i'm loading a beam flange beam from the top there can be either it can be case one or it can be case 2a or case 2b so based on that your analysis or your uh, value for the moment of resistance will definitely change so we will stop today's class over here and we will see the detailed analysis of these cases in the next class thank you